today we are discussing my favorite subject, math. I'm going to be going over all the mathy classes I took in college. I have put timestamps in the description as well as a link to the website with the course requirements for the math program I was in. Hopefully this overview will give you some insight into what a math major is. Spoiler alert! Greek letters, and proofs. During my first quarter, every freshman was required to take a writing class. The course that I chose was technically a math class, but it fulfilled my writing requirement because we wrote so many proofs. The class was called Rubik's Cubes, Square Dancing, and Mathematics. In that class, I learned to solve a Rubik's Cube, Square Dance, and write proofs about Rubik's Cubes and Square Dancing. That quarter, I also took a class called Intensive Linear Algebra and Multivariable Calculus. When my cocky freshman self saw this course had intensive in the title, I said, bring it, and bring it did. Let's just say that math starts to get really exciting when you start using letters instead of numbers, but it gets even more exciting when the English letters become Greek letters. This class was also easily the most difficult class I took in college, but because professors want students to get jobs, everyone's grade was rounded up to either an A or a B. I received a B. That was heartbreaking. A fun fact about this class was that it started with 26 students, six of which were female, and six months later the total class size dropped in half to 13. Of that 13, I was the only female, so the percentage of males went from 77% to 92%. Yay, diversity in STEM! My freshman year, I also took microeconomics, which was an unmemorable lecture hall class. My sophomore year, I took chaotic dynamical systems. This class was also a lot of proofs, Greek letters, and making pretty graphs. I also took probability and statistics my sophomore year, which was really exciting. This was my first taste of applied math. I was also taking a music class that was right before this class on the other side of campus, and I had 10 minutes to walk about a mile, so I missed the first five minutes of every class, and usually spent the rest of each class trying to figure out what happened during the first five minutes. The next quarter, I took econometrics, which also consisted of a lot of proofs and Greek letters. If I were to summarize what happened in econometrics, I would say this. You know how Excel has this handy feature to insert a scatter plot? Well, there's also a feature where you can insert a line of best fit. Econometrics is basically figuring out what the line of best fit is, even though Excel can do it for you. When I was taking econometrics, I was also taking game theory. This was one of my favorite classes. One of the first problems we learned about in this class was the Sally Clark case. In the 1990s, Sally Clark was wrongfully convicted of the murder of her two sons. Her children actually died of SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, but a professor presented flawed statistical evidence that led to her imprisonment. He testified that the chance of two children from an affluent family suffering from SIDS was 1 in 73 million. Bayes' theorem can be used to show that his calculation was incorrect, and the probability of two children from an affluent family suffering from SIDS is actually much higher. We learned about that case because we were learning about Bayes' theorem and Bayesian probability in that class. My job now is kind of similar to that. I work at a company where we use statistical evidence, economic theory, and data analysis to support law firms in legal matters. In my junior year, I took a few finance classes that were not part of my math major. They were part of a finance certificate I got, but there were a lot of math prerequisites for these finance classes, including calculus and econometrics. As part of the finance certificate, I took principles of finance, which was predictably unmemorable. I also took a class called investments, which can be summarized in the following sentence. You can't predict the stock market, so... Good luck if you want to work in finance. I also took two classes on financial derivatives, not calculus derivatives. We did not take any derivatives, but there was calculus. This class was actually super mathy, if mathy means lots of Greek letters and proofs. We were also forced to use the programming language R, which was scary because I thought I was taking an easy finance class. My junior year, I also took a class called Topics in Formal Models and Social Science. This class was traumatic. In addition to machine learning coding problem sets, we were given dense reading assignments and forced to participate in graded class discussions, which are, as you may know, two of a math major's worst nightmares. I am going to read an excerpt from the introductory paragraph from one of the papers we were assigned to read. 
Anyone in the comments who can translate this into English or Greek letters will receive a prize. We derive the expectation maximization algorithms to estimate the standard ideal point model with binary ordinal and continuous. Of all my classmates, I received the lowest grade in that class. I do not believe that that was the first time that I received the lowest grade in a class, but that was the first time I was aware because the final grade distribution was shared publicly. My senior year, I took a math class called Formal Models in Political Science. This class also consisted of dense reading and graded discussions, but was less painful because the last few weeks of class coincided with the outbreak of coronavirus, so the professor made our final project optional. We also spent a lot of time making pretty models, some of which were based on fancy statistical models, while others were not. It looks like I may have used a probit model here. This is a network model I created that definitely does not use any formal statistical methods. I made a dot for every US president, sorted the dots in a circle, kind of, and drew a line between presidents whose lifetimes overlapped. I'm not totally sure what the point of this was, but it looks cool. My senior year, I also took a coding class where I learned the basics of CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, and I created a website from scratch. This was a wonderful class. There were no prerequisites, and it did not count towards my major, but I had space in my schedule miraculously, and I was feeling regretful about not choosing computer science instead of math as a major. Lastly, in my senior year, I completed a senior thesis, which was technically a year-long class, even though I never attended a class. I just met with my thesis advisor about once a week. My senior thesis was a 336-page book titled A Geospatial Analysis of the Form and Migration of Crime, Hotspots in Los Angeles. And before I let myself sound too cool, I should mention that I worked on this with three other math majors, so I did not do all of this alone. Thank God. At some point, I would love to make a video talking about this in more depth because it was a year of my life, but we can save that for another time. Anyways, thank you for watching. Bye.